Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my NHL 20 franchise mode here in the state of hockey. In the previous episode we finished up the 2025 offseason resign phase draft all of that out of the way. We are just celebrating our Stanley Cup win, and yes, I'm going to go on and on and on and on and on about our Stanley Cup win until we're not the champions, and we will not not be the champions until someone kicks us out of the playoffs, or we miss the playoffs, because there's a thing in previous years where Stanley Cup champions tend to have a hangover in the season afterwards. I mean, you can look at the LA Kings in 20... I want to say 2015, where they won the cup in 2014, and then you just kind of crap the bed in 2015. I, th I still think they made the playoff. No, I might be wrong. Ah, oh, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. We don't want to have a hangover. Yes, we've partied all summer. Yes, we're just enjoying the biggest win of most all of these guys' careers. Everybody on this team. But it's time for a new season. Decisions were made last summer. I made sure the depth was looking pretty good. We're still looking like a very, very solid team. We honestly look better in some situations. There are some things to discuss. So let's go ahead and start talking about it right now. Your 2025-2026 Minnesota Wild. Obviously, the first line is untouched. Alexi Petroangelov, Anthony Francis and Kirill Kaprasov, the captain of the Minnesota Wild, the three-time reigning, three straight actually, Art Ross and Hart Memorial winner. Hopefully he goes for four and four. And you know what? The guy that I'm honestly looking forward to the most this year is Alexei Petrangelov. You want to know why? Last year, 37 games through the season, he had 11 goals. He finished with 42, the exact same point totals he had last year, or the year previous. If he was on a higher pace last year, he could have easily hit 60. Can he do that on this top line? He can, or the points will be more spread out. I think he'll always be, not the third wheel, I can't say that on the first line, because I remember in the last franchise mode with Columbus, he had the MVP line at... Matthew Savoie, Joshua Waugh, and Jeffrey Woodworth, right? I'm ho I'm trying to shape this line into that. I want them to be studs, and they are. They have proved that they are Stanley Cup champions. They are currently the champions of the hockey world. And the center, the generational talent in Anthony Francis is a man... You don't want to mess with. You do not want to mess with this guy. 119 points. 119 points three years straight, excluding 2024 when he had 120. One point more, but it's weird. It is weird how he had the exact same goal totals and assists, so I'm hoping this year there's no, there's no hangover. I want him to go out there, and I want him to dominate. And then we got the captain. Kirill Kaprasov, guy, le guy is a leader. He's one of the oldest players on this team at this current time. He was the cornerstone of this franchise when we started off. You know, he didn't play the first year. He came in in his rookie season, had 110 points, 73 goals. You will likely never see that kind of goal total production from a rookie in, in a season again. It's hard to to go like that it is hard to produce like that but he's been very very consistent throughout his career a 90 point player almost every year he is the man they're all the man and it only gets better from there Nils Hoglander Jack Hughes and Kale Newman and Kale Newman coming off of what 41 goals last year he's going up by 10 every year he had 69 points last year nice I'm expecting more out of the second line now there are a lot of questions about Nils Hoglander, especially with his contract coming up. Is he a guy on the move? Very much, potentially, that could very well happen, considering you have a guy like Louis Langweeder, who is an 86 overall. Yes, you see right there that his potential went from a medium top six 
to a high top six, which means he is more valuable than ever and we need to play him right. And he's a producer. He's not just this lame power forward on the third line, similar to guys that we've had before. Where they, oh, they produce, but they're not guys that are going to go out there and score important goals. He scored 31 points, uh, 31 goals in 82 games, playing 11 minutes on average a night. Less than last year, or the year before. Sorry, I know we're in a new season. Whoopsies. He might take he will take that spot i think that's a definite right now i don't want him sticking on the third line especially if he has that potential he could he could totally get to a 90 overall in his career and i don't want to stunt that growth very much luke Coonan, who will probably be a casualty to cap this season there's a lot of contracts that i want to discuss before we even start the regular season just because I want to get a few of them out of the way. Hopefully we can get a few guys at a cheaper price, like we've done with Petrangelov and and a bunch of guys on this team, especially a lot of the defense, where we got them on cheap, cheap contracts. Chris Griffin, who I am surprised grew in the offseason, is now an 86 overall. 36 points, 81 games last year. He did produce in the AHL. Apparently, he grew, which is huge for us, obviously. Third round pick in 2021. He, this is year, what, he's been in this franchise for four years? I don't see where he fits into the top six. Because you know a guy with his talent, he's a sniper. He has good stats. I'm not sure where his talents take him on this team. He might, I'm not sure, but right now... He has to stick on the third line. Hopefully that third line is more productive this year than it was last year. Third line is looking pretty solid. A guy like Jason Zucker is going to balance out the young guys like Adam Beckman and Connor Duar. I mean, they're not relatively young, but Jason Zucker has a lot of experience on his side. Beckman, Connor Duar. I decided to give Connor Duar the start in instead of uh, Julian Gauthier, who was one of our scratch players. I decided, you know what? Let's give Dewar a start. We know what Julian Gauthier is about. We signed him on a, what, one-year deal. He can just be that throw-in guy if we need him. And the Hicketts is our other scratched player as, as the defenseman. And obviously, the defensive core is always going to be the best part about this team. You have two-time, two-time Norris Trophy winner in Quinn Hughes. That is two straight Norris trophies for the man, Quinn Hughes leading that top pairing. I mean, he has a great partner in Brant Clark. You gotta love that. I'm, I'm not, I, yeah, I'll keep Brant Clark up there. I was, I was deciding maybe Matt Dumb up there, but Matt Dumb up there. It might be a casualty to cap. Brant Clark continues to get better. I thought, you know what, 72 points, that might be a cap for a player like this. He was almost point per game last year as a 22-year-old, and we have him locked up to one of the most team-friendly deals in the NHL. Obviously, he'll be a UFA at the end of that deal, but hopefully we'll have money around that time to pay probably $13 million for Brant Clark because he is 100% worth that kind of money. Matt Dumba, who I stated before that he might be a casualty to cap just because we have so much young talent on this team with a guy like Maurice Poffin who will be taking over Matt Dumba's spot in the very, very near future. Save $6 million, trade assets. Obviously, we want to make sure... We're not just losing players for nothing. I, I would hate to lose a guy j to free agency for absolutely nothing. So Matt Dumba, this could be his final year with this team. If we need cap space, he is going to be one of the guys to go. And Marcus Mironov. Marcus frickin' Mironov. Also a team-friendly deal. $7 million over the next seven years. Easily one of the best contracts in the league for one of the best fine-tool players in the NHL. 67 points, career best. He's an offensive defenseman and he puts up two-way defenseman stats. <laughs> Even though he puts up the offensive numbers, it's not like he's a liability any, in, at any point. Oliver Shillington came back this last year in, in uh, the re-sign phase. I'm like, yeah, you know what, let's bring him back. And we did. We got him at, what, two, almost $2 million for one year. I thought, you know what, Let's bring him back. He was really, really solid for us last year. I am a little iffy with these two as a pairing. 
just because they're both offensive defensemen, but I'm hoping Shillington, as a strong defenseman, can help the young Potvin out. And Potvin's going to move up in that line very, very quickly as a 19-year-old. Okay, so let's check out the special teams. They're, they're, not, they're looking very, very similar to last year. Langweeder's getting some time. Kale Numini, you don't see Nils Hoglander on that special teams unit. I just thought Langweeder might be more impressive for us on the power play. I mean, I think we got Nils Hoglander on the four-man. If not, I think I can change that up if we need to. We got that plus five on the top power play man unit. Easily top a plus five. Oh, they're so good. Oh, and I gave Anthony Francis just a little extra time there on the power play because he's a dominant he's a dominant forward. Petra Angelov, they, they, they got it down. They got it down. They're easy. Easy peasy lemon for breezy. You got your top guys in top positions. Luke Kunin, Duar, Zucker, and Francis with Dumba, Mirnov, Brant Clark, and Quinn Hughes in the first penalty kill unit. And then you got uh, three-man penalty kill unit, Kunin and Francis heading those lines. Potvin with a little more time there. Extra lines, Anthony Francis, Kaprasov, the two studs. I mean, we have a lot of studs on this team, but those two guys you definitely look look towards. You, got, you This team, it, our special team units are probably going to be great year in, year out, especially if goaltending is league average, but we will get to that. They're... Three-man unit is crazy good. Extra attacker Francis and Kaprasov in the shootout. You would want to deal with that on any night. Goaltending, you got Jane Weeman. I know we had a lot of problems last year with him in the postseason and regular season. He had, what, 40... How many? 46 wins last year in the regular season? 46 wins. Wow, my memory is fantastic. He was... Okay, he was really good down the stretch for us. We won a lot of games. We were best team in the league two years in a row. He was a big part of that. Postseason, we did end up winning the cup, but there were a lot of times where I'm like, this guy, if he does not pick up the pace, he was definitely the reason we didn't win the series outright. He was definitely a liability in a lot of sense. But he also was good in a lot of games, so I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was the team in front of him. I don't know how it could be the team in front of him, but he's your starting goaltender for right now, and he's a guy for the future as it currently stands. His backup... Frederick Anderson, you know what I thought? I, I thought, you know what, let's go for an older guy. He's anxious with his new team, $4 million for one year. It doesn't hurt us. He's he's an older guy, similar to Ben Bishop. Ben Bishop, they were around the same overall when we when we went into free agency. I'm, I'm like, Ben Bishop is going to get worse over the offseason because he's older. Frederick Anderson for one year should help us out a little bit. Obviously, we showed you the scratch players. Let's go through the AHL a little quicker. There are a few notable prospects in the AHL this year. One of them being Vashislav Chubasov, who we drafted, I don't know how many years ago. It was uh, 2024, so just a two, two, two seasons ago, 19th overall in the first round. He's a young guy for us, 69 overall, nice. You got Thaliberger, those are the two most notable forwards. And then you got defense. You got Ted Sagan, who we just drafted, 67 overall, giving him a bit of time. You also have Stefan Backer. Those are our two mo no most notable defensive prospects. You have Addison. You have uh, Lujnin, who might all honestly be a solid defensive uh, demon for us in the future, just because he's an awesome overall at his current age. I won't bother going over the special teams. It's basically the top players just playing most of the top roles <laughs> and then you also Boris Habibulin 23 I'm not sure where he shapes up in the very near future especially with cap he might be a solid depth player for us in the NHL he never turned into what I thought he was gonna be you know we drafted him first round he's kind of he, I wouldn't say he's a bust you never know a lot of players turn out like that some players excel he has not really been excelling and honestly the best part about my roster we are so deep at goal at goaltending gustav vasanoyov is the starting goaltender in the ahl he might even contend for the starting position in the nhl very very soon alongside christian rensfeld another we have we have three highly goalies 
in our system or not in our system three high elite goalies in our team we have Jade Weeman, we have Christian Rensfeld, and we also have a guy that we just picked last year. We also we also have a plethora of medium elite goalies. We have Mackey, we have who's this guy? I don't know. Uh, then we have Ulanov. I thought I Ulanov didn't have the best stats, so I thought I'd just go with uh, Gustavs. So we have a lot of goalies. We have a lot of goalies. So if we need to make a trade or two in the very very near future. We have the assets to do that. Now, if we want to manage our assets right, the best thing to do right now is to view contracts to uh, put things into perspective. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to edit that sneeze out because I don't feel like it because I'm unprofessional. <laughs> and this is... <laughs> I'm not even... Uh, will I? Future, if future Owen feels like taking that out, he will. But that is just a nuisance. Ah, we'll see if... Ah, whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> Let's go to all expiring. Obviously, the top of that list this year is two-time reigning Norris Trophy defenseman in Quinn Hughes. He's asking for a pretty penny. He only wants a one-year deal. That brings him to a UFA status. We have his rights right now as it stands. We only have $20 million in cap remaining uh, see that's the problem if we bring it up to eight years he's asking for 19 million dollars a defenseman but we do have the 0.85 trick i'm i'm not sure if you want if you want eight years so let's let's just see what number we could potentially bring it down to 0.85 16 am i okay with paying 16 million dollars for quinn hughes yeah that's He's two-time reigning Norris Trophy defenseman. That's a lot of money to dish out, but he's also probably worth it. We also have to look to Kel Newman, who's also a young guy, $16 million for over eight for eight years. Brings him to a UFA, 16.250 times 0.85 equals 13. Now my options right now are to hope that they ask for a little bit less money heading into the offseason, especially since we just come came off a Stanley Cup championship. Maybe they'll be like, okay. They'll come to their senses. They're like, okay. If this team wants to, con to continue to win, they're going to have to take a pay cut. And I've seen that a lot in a few different situations where they just come up a cup, off a cup win and they ask for a bunch of money. We wait, and then they ask for like half, half as much throughout the season. We also have a guy like Langweeder. Three million dollars over eight years. Uh, eight years, he'd want five, and I would rather lock this guy up right now because his best offensive stats have not even come out yet. So we could get him for four and a half for eight years, and a guy who could potentially be our second line left winger for the foreseeable future. I'm okay with paying him that. We also have a guy like Chris Griffin, two million dollars. Mm, oh, we might be smart about the. Okay, okay, okay. This is also a guy who we have not seen the best of. If we maybe you give him a long, if we give him a long contract, it it could be irresponsible because we could just trade him away and that would benefit the other team. But it could also benefit us really, really well, especially if he has a great offensive season and then we have to deal with a lot of assets. But hopefully those two guys sign. I'm hoping for the best. We have Hoglander's rights who could be traded away. We have Newman's rights who we are gonna. We're going to move some money around this offseason, but for right now, those two guys, we need it back, or we need back off. We need all these guys back, obviously. Quinn Hughes, Hoglander, Newman, and Ken Waite. The only guy I'd be willing to dish out money right now for is Ken Newman, but I think signing Griffin and Langmeter, that might leave us a little, a few dollars short. Quinn Hughes is a guy that we're going to have to wait for. Obviously, I want to bring him back. But hopefully he comes to his senses and doesn't ask for $90 million over eight years. Just saying. So honestly, before the view draft class thing pops up, let's check who's who's the top guy this year. It is Mats Axelson. Axelson? Axelson. What a name. 17 years of age, out of the Frolunda Indians in the SHL. You have Sergei Gogolov. You have Pedro Barnaby. You got Patrick Van Vig, 
or Wanvig. You have Sebastian Niederberger. You have Jacques Beripi. <laughs> you have Jalmerson. German. You have Josephson. You have a few top guys here. I think I want to say we have another team's pick this year. Especially with all the assets we have, we have the ability to move up in the draft if need be, especially with all the expiring contracts. That is definitely a thing that we could look for. So we ha Oh, we don't have an extra pick this year. It's next year. We have Toronto's first round pick next year. Maybe Toronto will be a bad team next year. But for right now, let's just jump into the season. I'm hoping that there isn't a whole lot of problems. So let's sim all the way to the end of October. Hopefully we're a good team. I could see why we would be struggling right out of the gate. No, I do not want to trade Frederick Anderson. Why would I do that after I just signed him to a contract? Get him off the block. I'll keep my first on the block just because. Just, just because. Chris Griffin signs a contract that's good. And Langweeder, good. So those are two young guys that are like, hey, we're coming to play for a really, really good team. Might as well take a discount. And they do, which is huge. For eight years, we get two really young guys back. Brings them up to UFA. 12-2 win over the Nashville Predators in, in preseason. Jesus. <laughs> I know it's preseason, but do you really have to go that hard, Minnesota? We are definitely cap compliant for the time being. And it's time for the regular season. Starting off the season against the New Jersey Devils. Hopefully we get, get a W. Jack Hughes' former team. 6-2 victory. Two Metropolitan Division teams. And we pick up two straight victories. Back to the West. Losing regulation to Anaheim. St. Louis. 5-0 shutout. Hell yeah. Columbus again. 6-3 loss. Jesus, it's not been a great start to the season so far. 3-2 uh, win. We're 4-2 in the regular season so far. Draft we already looked at, obviously. Anaheim, 7-4 victory. No, we don't want Jaden Swartz. <laughs> no, thank you. Why would I do that? Why? Why would I do that? A few wins in a row here. That is huge. Let's end off the month positive. Solid would be huge. Luke Quinn wants to talk to me. Luke. You're playing 13:33 in the evening. You're playing special teams. You are. You know you're the third line center. How much are we going to have to talk about that? You're making five million dollars. You're making plenty of money. You're happy. You're living your life. You could be a second line sem center somewhere else, but you will never be a winner <laughs> without the Minnesota Wild. <laughs> Was that petty of me to say? Probably. And he's a team player. We tried to persuade him, and he's okay with that. Whatever. Don't come back to me. Okay? Arizona, Calgary, and Montreal to end off the month. Kel Newman wants to talk. Play him 15.55 in the evening. Let's try to persuade him. I have a feeling it's going to go the opposite. I'm going to disagree. I don't care. I don't care, Kel Newman. You're playing second line time. You're playing power play. You're fine. I don't care. Uh, Nils okay. Nils Honglander, don't even start with me, dude. I'm going to try to persuade you because I'm a good general manager. Oh, you're really, you're gonna, really, you don't deserve more minutes. You don't, you don't, Neil Hoglander, you're not a cornerstone for this team. I'm sorry, that's just a fact. That is just a fact. Langweed, oh my. Oh, okay, this is the only guy that I would consider giving more time to, just because I really, really like him. See, any? he's a team player. He's okay with me persuading him. It's okay. Okay. Calgary, 1-0 OT victory, I'll take it. Montreal, 7-3 win. We're 11-2-0 after the first month. It felt like we played a lot of games there in October, but let's see how we're doing after 13 games. Oh, wow, Anthony Francis went off. <laughs> we're first in our division by two points. Basically a tie in our division because the Avalanche have one game at hand on us and the Jets aren't too far behind. Let's check out the stats here through... You know what? Let's sim two months just to see, because it could be a false start. I want to go two months and then check the stats to see how we're doing because everything will have leveled out or we're just going to be playing balls to the wall. Okay. November. Let's see how we're doing. Strong end to November. Let's see if that continues here in November. Okay. Boris Havibulin was hurt in the AHL with a sore foot. How? Sore foot, really? <sighs> really, Boris? 3-2 loss to start the month of November. Habi Bulin is back. We'll want to make sure he gets a little bit of time there in the AHL just because 
he could be a solid depth guy for us in the future. Nothing super impressive, but he could be a guy for us in the very near future. Chicago, 4-3 OT victory. I'll take it. Avalanche, come on. 5-3 win. I don't want Kemp. 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 Kempney. I've heard people pronounce it both ways. I've heard Kempney. I've also heard... Whatever. Avalanche, I don't want him. I was, I was stroking out there, but we're good. San Jose. Oh, regulation loss, and we pick up a victory. Okay, four... Oh, and we... Okay. Keep, keep strolling along. Edmonton Oilers. Regulation loss. We've been getting a lot of those this season. Brant Clark has been injured until the 25th. Head coach replaces player. 5-3 loss. Two regulation losses in a row. There's a win. Nashville, two games against Nashville. Brant Clark is back. See, it might have just been a false start this season. I know we're a good team, but are we the 60-plus win team we were last year? Okay, Brant Clark is back. Good to see. He was doing pretty well before he went off with injury. Nashville, come on. 7-3 victory. 3-2 loss in the shootout. And he's going to be mad at us. I hate this game. I hate this game. Why? Why are you like this, Luke Coonan? Why are you like this? Chicago and Vancouver. I don't care about you, Nils. I don't. I don't care about you anymore. They're okay. You're happy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I should have checked the stats, but... Oh my god, Lewis Langmeter, what, 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 what? Uh, I'm gonna smash my head off this table. <laughs> Y'all gotta be a problem. 4 2 lot. It was rough month. Oh, come on. Uh, end the month off strong. Come on. 6 2 victory. I'll take it. 18 8 and 1. That's a good record, but we could be so much better. We could be. That is just a fact. Let's check out the stats. I wanna see what's going wrong here so far i want to see what's going right think of the positive zone i know i'm a pessimist but let's look at some of the positives here anthony francis is a, is a beast he could be better though i mean <laughs> i know 37 points in 27 games is pretty good it's only going to get better kaprasov 30 and 27 he's been pretty solid leading the team in goals actually petrangelov 28 and 27 pretty good kel newman has been not the best, really has not. I don't I don't know why he's asking for more time even though we're playing him second line. Ah. Ah. 20 points in 27 games. It's on a better pace than he was last year. Jack Hughes could 100% be better. I'm honestly not sure what's going on here. Is he performing on the not really on the power play? Mills Hoglander, 15 points. Ah. Luke Kunin's been pretty solid. Langmeter has not been the best. Duar, 10 points, honestly pretty good. Chris Griffin, not great. Jason Zucker has been what I asked for him to be. Beckman, eh, I guess. Yeah. See, I kind of felt it was a false start. I... I, under, I understand it. I get it. But we could be so much better, okay? Defense. My pride and joy. Quinn Hughes, is he coming for another Norris? Probably. Is he going to ask for more, more money? Probably. He has four game winners. Great on the power play. 27 points. Seven goals already. I feel like he didn't score any goals last year. Or, or yeah, a few years ago he didn't score rarely any. I find that pretty funny, actually. Scoring goals left, right, and center. He's a beauty. What can I say? Marcus Mirnoff. What, I, I keep giving him praise, and I keep... I keep underrating him because he's so damn good. He is... The future of this team, our first ever pick as a general manager in the NHL entry draft. Brant Clark, 18 points in 25 games. Pretty good, he's on pace for about what Miranoff's having. Matt Dumba has been okay. Plus minus is really solid. Shillington has been okay. Potvin in his rookie season says he's minor top two defenseman. But I want him here in the NHL. Just because I think he's ready for that time. If we need to send him down throughout the regular season, I'll do that. But as it stands, I want him in the NHL. It's time to talk about goaltending because I have a bad feeling goaltending is our weakness.
Excuse me? <laughs> uh... Huh. Uh, Weeman. <laughs> did somebody... Did somebody give you the pep talk of a light Of a lifetime? A 13 wins in 19 games. Pretty good. 931 and a 193 goals against. He has to be the best goal in the league. Those stats are incredible. I doubt he'll stay like that the rest of the season. Frederick Anderson needs to be better, though. Hot damn. Hot diggity damn. Let's check out the entire league stats. Let's see who's leading the way. Hopefully, Anthony Francis can go for another Art Ross. Best goal in the league right now, as it's... Oh, jeez, there's two goalies going out. Gregor DeVries went to the Montreal... Or went from the Montreal Canadiens to the Boston Bruins. Oh, my God. Montreal probably got a heck load of... Pay how, much are, how much are they paying him? $8 million? I'm assuming that's two, three first-round draft picks. Jesus. Who would you give it to right now? I mean, Weeman's got a better goals against in five less games, and he has the same amount of wins. Same amount of save percentages. Uh, probably Gregor. Oh, it's a long, long season ahead of us, okay? Why did I press back? I did not mean to do that. I meant to check the entire league stats. I only checked goaltending. <laughs> Let's go to rookie skaters. I wonder who's leading the way in that category. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Minnesota. It's currently Damian Hunter. That's a name I know. I think that was a subscriber-created player. 83 overall. Awesome. We also have another subscriber-created player and Drew Evans for the Vegas Golden Knights. Pretty good. Matthew Picard. Felix Leidecker, who was uh, a created player on my end. Having a good season. Uh, subscriber-created player in, in Tua for the San Jose Sharks. Jacob Perot. Having a solid season at a weird overall. Bobby Bobson. Zach Stringer. Sean Terzlug. <laughs> Defenseman. Who's leading the way in that category? Tori Krug is tied for the most points in one less game than Quinn Hughes. But Quinn Hughes has a way better plus minus. It's his, it's his trophy right now as it stands. Maybe Miranov can contend for a trophy this year. You never know. Good season from our decor though. Let's check out who the current uh, league leading scorer is. Who is it going to be? Tyler Sagan. Tyler Sagan is f four points ahead of Anthony Francis in one less game. Anthony Francis has a long way to go, but I think at the end of the day, he can probably make a run at another Art Ross. Hopefully he can, who's leading in goals. I think it's Tyler Sagan as well. 24 and 26. The Dallas Stars are having a damn good season. They're in the same division as well. How is Dallas doing? Dallas? Dallas are not even in a playoff spot right now. That goes to show how weird their team is, but let's... I, th I gotta make an adjustment here. Something is weird. Something is off. Like, second line has not been super great. First line's been pretty, well, the best, obviously. Is it defense? No. I mean, go something like that. Playmaker on the third line, but playmakers rarely ever work on the third line. Uh, I f that's weird. Let's go another month with these lines. Maybe it was just a weird month. Okay. Let's, let's go. Let's see how we do in December of 2025. If we're, if we're playing the same pace we played in November, then we'll look to change something up because something is 100% not working there. Jack Hughes wants to talk to us, but I also, I agree with you there. The heck? I'm, agree I'm agreeing with you, dude. I'm agreeing with you and you're mad. Our chemistry is taking a dump right now. Luke Coonan has been injured until the 10th of December, head coach replaces player. Let's get Guthier in there on the third line. Win against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Draft class, I'm not too worried about that. Los Angeles Kings, 5-2 regulation loss. Luke Kunin is back, that's good to hear. Guthier, how did you do in your first game? One goal, minus one, absolute beauty. Can't get much better than that. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure. Something's not... I thought Jack Hughes was going to be that guy. But we have not had a second-line center go out there and just 
blow it up. Like, hopefully he gets to it like an 80-point pace. Like a 75-point pace. Get to your best season ever. 7-6 shootout loss. Bad game there. Come on. 7-6 regulation win over the Panthers. 7-3 win. Jesus, we're scoring goals. Okay, Cal uh, Carolina. Too many Cs, okay? <laughs> o OT loss. Two regulation wins. I'll take it. 23-9-3. Make that 24-9-3. Tampa Bay. Come on. First and a fourth for Jerry Mayhew. Gary? Jerry. Gary. It's like gif or yif. You never really know. Mayhew, you're an absolute beauty. No, thank you. I'm sorry. Tampa Bay. 3 nothing shutout. We should never, ever be getting shut out. Jesus, goaltending. My God, Christian Rensfeld has been hurt in the AHL with a fractured collarbone. Just like Connor McDavid. Or he had a clavicle? I'm not sure. Head coach replaces the player. We'll get like Mackie or somebody in there in the AHL. 4-2 regulation win over the Devils. Okay, let's make that three in a row after two rough losses there. Great end of the month. 27-11-3. and three. And Anthony Francis is turning on the Jets. First in our division by six points. I'm glad the Stars aren't in a playoff spot because they were looking pretty dangerous there with Tyler Sagan. Okay, let's look at the, let's look at the stats here. Let's look who's leading the way in what category, okay? Forwards. Anthony Francis 58 and 41. He is 100% picking up the pace here. I'm hope hopefully he does that all the way down to the end of the season. What kind of what pace is he on right now for? Is he going to hit 120 or 119 seems to be his cap right now. Is he going to hit 58 goals, which he's done three seasons in a row? Hopefully. He's already got seven game winners exactly halfway through the season. Petrangelov has been really, really good after he struggled last season. 23 power play points. He's been a man, he's been a man on a mission on the power play. Kaprasov, 45. He's been a stud. As the captain, he's doing exactly what he needs to do. He doesn't always have to be in the spotlight. But he knows when to show up. Kale Newman, 29 points, 18 goals. He can be better. I know he can get. He can be better. Hopefully, he can turn out to be a point per game player in the near future. I mean, I, if he can break that 69 point threshold, nice. Uh, he'll be okay. 41 goals is always going to be hard to match year in year out, especially if you're not like a top tier player on a team and you're not playing first line minutes. But hopefully he can uh, hit the over his best season yet. Jack Hughes has been disappointing. That is just a fact. 23 points in 41 games. Just over a half point per game is not acceptable for Jack Hughes. That is a fact. We did win a cup last year. He scored a few goals in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Yes, but he 100% needs to be better. Do we look for a different second line center? Is it a winger? Because Nils Hoglander apparently is not being that guy right now. Luke Koonin, uh, 21 points in 39 games. That's what I'm looking for for a third line center. He's been good. Nils Hoglander must be better on that second line. Langweeder, 11 goals. He uh, doesn't look like he'll hit 30 if he picks up the pace here towards the end of the season. He can, obviously. You never know. It's the NHL. He needs to be better. Chris, uh, Connor Duar. Have I been saying Christian Duar? Connor Duar. 15 points. Not bad. 8 goals. Pretty good. Same with uh, Chris Griffin. 11 points. Can 100% be better. Jason Zucker. What I'm asking for. He needs to be a better, better plus player though. Backman. Pretty good. Gauthier. One, one goal in two games. What a stud. Defense. Here we go. 44 points for Quinn Hughes. I'm assuming he's leading the way in that department. Marcus Mirnov. Is he one of the best draft picks we've ever made? I want to say he has been because he's an absolute stud and he's a savior. Eminem is the man. Brant Clark has been pretty good. I don't think he'll hit his 76 that he did last year. Honestly, he'd have to go on a really good pace. He did miss two games there, but uh, you never know. It's the NHL. But he's, he's had a good season nonetheless. Matthew Dumba can be better, but he's good plus minus. Oliver Shillington has not been great. He's been good in the point totals, but plus player? No, he, that's not true. 
Same with Maurice Popfin. Is he up to... He's 79 overall still. I feel like he still needs to be in the NHL. I will look towards the trade deadline if he's not... I don't want to... I don't plan on trading him away. Maybe we just send him to the AHL, let him play there for a bit, and call up uh, somebody else. Okay, Hicketts, two games, plus one. Solid there. I'm assuming... Goaltending got worse. That is just a fact. Weeman got wor I mean... He only lost two regulation games that month. So... I mean, there's not a whole lot to complain about there. I mean, he say percentage went down, goals against went down, uh, went up. He's been really good. There's a few games where it have been like, damn, that's a lot of goals to give up. Frederick Anderson needs to be better. He's not even a 900 goalie. Why can't our goalies ever be like 920s? Why? Why is this game like that? That that is the hill that I die on. Goalies are always good, usually. As in, like, in the grand scheme of things, like, usually you have your guys on... I don't know what thing I'm going off on. Like, there are outliers that have 920s and above. But the league average in the NHL, what is it, like, 915? Usually, you have goalies that are under 900, and you, those are on pretty terrible teams. Minnesota is not a terrible team. Frederick, Frederick Anderson is a pretty, really good goalie. Even at 36, he'll probably still be a solid goalie. At 84 overall, he needs to be better. Uh, let's... Do we... Mm, you know what? Let's... Let's... Okay. Let's go one more month. One more month. One more month. And then I think I have some trades to make at the deadline next episode. I want to go one more month, see where we're at, and then... I'll play with my imagination a little bit, see what I can do, because there's a few guys on this team, maybe we make one improvement heading towards the playoffs. Christian Rensfeld is great, good, he's ready to come back in the AHL, good to see. Who is the goalie that I need to take out? It's uh, Ulanov. He's pretty good in two games. Let's let's get Rensfeld in there, because he is the high elite, I'd rather hit, have him in the lineup anyway. Vasanoyov is up to a 79. Keep that in mind. That is big. Starting off January with a uh, loss and then a win. Cool. Ben Chariot for a first. Why would I do that trade, Dallas? Why? First round picks are valuable either way. Like, <laughs> what? Are you on crack game? Like, come on. Be more reasonable. Come on. Four straight wins there. Nathan Beaulieu. That's not a name I've heard in quite some time. For th No! No! Teams, can you get more creative if you want my assets? Jeez Louise, I know we're a great team, but our picks are still somewhat valuable. Lewis Langwitter has been hurt until the 23rd. Head coach replaces player. We're actually going to stop the simulation there for... You know what? No, let's just go up until... We have a bye week there. There's no point. He, he should be back literally this game. Exactly. Win against Buffalo. That's huge. Lewis Langwitter, welcome back. Julian Guthier, how did you do in your game? So two points in three games. Julian Gauthier is an absolute beast. And that is a fact. That is a fact. 100%. Chris Griffin's overall actually went down. He is a, technically a third line scorer. So that's, that's good to see. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Chicago. Come on. Keep the win streak alive. Yes. Finish this month off well. Chris Griffin has been injured. Julian Gauthier, welcome back to the club. Calgary, good. Fenisenkov, a first, and Baxman to the Anaheim Ducks for... Damn, Andre Cash. Cash? Jesus. What a trade there for the Anaheim Ducks. They get a lot of really awesome assets there, but uh, big player to give up, but you do get a few really awesome assets, so I don't blame you. It was a good trade both ways. Okay, let's end off this month well. We are currently on a... Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 game win streak. We haven't lost in regulation since Colorado. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 games without a regulation loss. Don't, don't, come on, end the video on a high note. Come on, Buffalo. 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 Come on. Buffalo. Yes, with a regulation win. Jeez Louise. The win streak is alive. Anthony Francis with 74 points. 
But you know what? I think I'm gonna I'm thinking I'm gonna end the episode there. Don't want it to be super long. Next episode we'll talk about the stats so far. I have an idea of what I maybe want to do. But you're gonna have to wait for the next episode. Thank you very much. If you've enjoyed this, please leave a like, leave a comment, share with people who you think may enjoy this sort of thing. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.